Hi. Um, uh, this is, I'm Helene Russell, and guess who I'm wearing? <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, so this is an introduction to the course. So not to Kierkegaard himself, but to how we're going to do the course. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to use Populi in a way that I've created for you to try to make it as easy as possible as you're navigating a, um, a remote class on Kierkegaard. The primary thing for me is that we have a good time for conversation in our class discussions, but also I want to make sure that you um, learn about Kierkegaard. And um, I've got student objectives listed in the syllabus. The syllabus, by the way, I will send out and or have already sent out perhaps when you're uh, watching this. And then also it is posted on Populi in a couple of different places, maybe three or four different places. So both as a file that you can download and as a copied and pasted in something um, under syllabus, you can just click on syllabus and then go through it if you don't wanna have it downloaded on your own computer. But I suggest that you do that. It's quite long because there's a lot of details in it. So what I'd like to do is go over it briefly and then there'll be other uh, shorter videos on the different assignments so that you can review those as those assignments come up. Okay, so first, let's see, I'm gonna share my screen and I think I wanna share, well, we can share this first. Where is it? I don't know where it went. Class link extension, oh, here it is. All right, so is that being shared now? Can you see that? I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm hoping you can see it. So when you go to your classes, so you, you come to Populi and then you find your class, you'll notice there's a little Kierkegaard there and you push the elect button, 806 studies in Kierkegaard, theology of Kierkegaard, whichever. There's a bulletin board. When you click on the syllabus here, you notice that there is both a description of the course, assignment groups, and then the syllabus is right here. So it's going to give you class discussion, uh, class uh, description, and it goes on um, and on and on and has objectives. So you can take a look at those in particular. Um, I'll actually read them now because I want you to keep those things in mind as we are uh, doing our work together. So what I'd like you to be able to do is to make compelling arguments for your own interpretation of Kierkegaard's thought, and particularly as it relates to his critiques and his insights about how to become an authentic Christian in the midst of Christendom. That's the topic that I've chosen to focus our work on Kierkegaard on for this class, this course. Students will also be able to identify and evaluate quality secondary resources. This is going to be really helpful, particularly for the MTS students, but I think it's helpful for everyone. How, how best do you, do you judge what kind of criteria do you do, do you use, how do you evaluate and assess whether a secondary source is helpful? Is it, does it have a good interpretation of Kierkegaard? Is it something that makes sense to you? Does it give you, um, insights? Does it explain something that you didn't understand? Does it give you extra information like the context of Kierkegaard or perhaps who he's responding to or what he's hoping to do with this work that he's doing? He's a very complicated guy. He writes in various different voices and for really one main purpose, I think many people would argue, but it looks like there's a lot of different purposes going on throughout his authorship. So we'll, um, that means then that there are lots of secondary sources, people who have interpreted him in a variety of different ways and use his works for a variety of different reasons. So we'll, we'll um, use him as a practice and um, learning template for us to uh, improve our understanding of how you engage secondary literature, which is also one of the um, student learning outcomes for MTS students. Um, students will also apply and integrate 
Kierkegaard's insights and his critiques in your own constructive formulation of a chosen theological theme, something that you're going to pick. You'll um, also, hopefully, be able to apply and integrate his insights and his ideas and critiques and methods to your own personal spiritual quest and perhaps maybe use it in your church context as well. So you'll see that there are required texts here. Um, these texts are, I'm making it bigger so I can see it. I have old eyes. You all probably have nice young eyes that can focus. Um, but you'll notice that there are, there are uh, five primary texts. We'll also be reading some secondary uh, literature as well as shorter selections that um, we have, that uh, we've had scanned uh, for the most part, or there are links to where you can read the, those, that material. So with the five books here, you'll notice that a, a few of them are, maybe just a couple of them, are also available through, as an ebook. So that means you don't have to purchase it. You can just use the ebook if you'd like. Uh, so I suggest you take a look at those books, Purity of Heart, Fear and Trembling, Sickness Unto Death, Works of Love, and then my book on Kierkegaard and Arigari. Uh, so now um, I've also given you a list of the different assignments and there's uh, a rubric, the different assignments here are listed. I'm gonna have a separate uh, lecture that will talk about those assignments. And the appendix, really helpful thing to have. I have listed, gone through in detail, uh, what kinds of questions and issues that I want you to address in each of the assignments. And it should really help you um, engage the assignment. If you wanna get an A, it's really easy, just follow those directions. Um, you'll notice behind me, there's a, there's a, this is the Frau Church, Frau Kirk, um, Our Lady Church. Uh, in Copenhagen, which is where Kierkegaard worshipped. And there's other information that you can take a look at, late work, some things cannot be turned in late, like discussions, there's no reason to turn it in late because the discussion, our discussion post is used for our class period. So if you turn it in a week late, that doesn't do us any good. Um, and then of course, we're well, I'll show you these when we get to the assignments. Um, plagiarism, inclusive language, and I don't know why it doesn't have the picture. Well, if you download it, it'll have the picture, and the picture has, uh, it's a picture of a map. I'll get to it. I'll show it to you here. Where is it? Ah, here's this. This is probably easier even to see it. Here. So there's an um, image of a map here, and then I've listed the different numbers um, I've listed uh, where the University of Copenhagen is, where Frau Church is, where Kierkegaard lived growing up, where he moved to here and here and then here. Uh, or is it, yeah, it's here. And then also the castle, the famous castle uh, that he would have walked around and the gardens are up here. Um, so it's just kind of a fun thing. Anyway, so then we get to our weekly schedule. So now I'm gonna go back to the Populi. So we're back in Populi, and I'm gonna go from this, we're gonna go, where is it? Go back here, ah. So now we're back to our main page, uh, and we're gonna go to lessons. So I'm gonna suggest that you use this, this is gonna be your best friend, lessons. So you can click on lessons, and you go to the first week, I've just divided it up into different weeks for you. Um, so the first week is the intro to Kierkegaard. And you come down here and you see the assignments listed. There's also lectures um, that are also here. And um, I've invited you to view a documentary. Um, it's a sort of documentary. It has Kierkegaard in it, but of course they didn't have film then. And so it's somebody portraying Kierkegaard, but it's using Kierkegaard's words and then there's a narrator. Yeah. Um, and then I've asked you to read a short, um, a review of a short uh, recent biography of Kierkegaard, which is kind of a fun, I've, I've purchased it and it, it's interesting. Um, we can talk about that later. And then I've asked you to preview uh, some of his uh, writings about either or. 
So here we have the syllabus listed again on the first day. So you can take a look at that in detail. And this is the lectures that I've created. Um, just go to part two because part one is really this. So it'll be first. Anyway, uh, so then there's the short documentary on Kierkegaard. And as you can see, it's kind of this interesting little that will connect you to it. And um, here's a guy playing Kierkegaard. Existences which should be revised. It looks our like him, huh? way of life is stuff and nonsense. Yep, our way of life is stuff and nonsense. We understand that. And then there's the review of her biography. And it's all listed there. So this is a really cool thing, the way that, we, that we've created this. And then here is the readings. Um, I've had them scanned, and then you can get to them through here, and you can read them that way. Um, but there's also um, the essential Kierkegaard, which is, uh, where, where we go here, this. Um, this, the essential Kierkegaard. This is also an ebook, so you can go ahead and use your CTS ID to get to get on to where we have our ebooks and then you can read it. The whole thing is there. Um, this just has the scan material that, that I've suggested that you read. Now it's not divided in terms of the assignments, it's the whole thing. So you'll need to pay attention to the page numbers. And here's some extra resources that I thought were kind of fun. There's lots of resources on Kierkegaard. I invite you just to explore some of these. Here's um an interesting lecture um, that I like this lecture and it, you know it's talking about the, the the leap from aesthetic to ethical or to religious um, and then John Stuart Offal also is a great resource uh, he's a, a professor at, at the University of Copenhagen and at the SK he's the director of the SK Center and so he's written, um, he's given lectures, and I think this one is on Socrates and Kierkegaard, but the first part has some interesting information about Kierkegaard's life. And then we have your next lesson. So when you're done with all of that, you can either push back to the next lesson. So everything you need is right there, um, you know, uh, at your fingertips. It's either in your books, it's either in your books, or it's on Populi for the most part. So then we can go back to lessons and we'll go to, um, let's say lesson eight. So this is week eight. And then we'll have, uh, you can see there's, there's the question is what's the nature of truth? And I've um, listed the assignments here. We're also gonna be reading some secondary literature here. And those also will have a connection. I've listed the student learning outcomes for, for this week. And then I have a little fun thing about, you know, the, the leap of faith, which Kierkegaard is talking about in that particular text. Oh, and you'll also notice there's posts due. So those posts are also in this populi. Uh, so all you have to do is click on the populi and it gives you the assignment for the post. Most of them are this generic post, just asking you to write a short reflection on uh, the, the reading that we've 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 covered and it can be i don't understand what he's talking about here can you clarify that or a critical question like his understanding of truth seems to miss a whole bunch of things blah 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 um it's meant to inspire conversation so i'm i'm inviting you um to post there's 10 posts i've asked you to do and i'm inviting you to post uh something that will encourage conversation and get it on the post and, and then you can also go to discussions and then you'll be able to there aren't any posts here because people haven't written but people will be able to post and then you can respond you can add a comment or just read what other people have said because uh it'll be helpful i think as we do our present our discussions uh in class so going back to the the lessons you notice we've got um, lessons for all the classes. There's not one on uh, week seven because that's break. And then I also wanted you to notice that um, we have 
we, we're not going to be here on Labor Day, so we'll skip Labor Day. Um, oh, for for week two, I I do have the the reading that I'd like you to do about the aesthetic and the ethical sphere, and it's not just about the aesthetic and ethical sphere; it's actually examples of the aesthetic and ethical sphere. That's kind of the way Kierkegaard is. He gives you an example of something that he's trying to get at. And here's a little bit more of uh, somebody reading some of the, more of the material that, than from either or that we're not reading. from either or, 1843 by Soren Kierkegaard. And one, I just love the last one here. I saw that and laughed. A strange thing happened to me in my dream. I was wrapped into the seventh heaven. There sat all the gods assembled. As a special dispensation, I was granted the favor to have one wish. Do you wish for youth, said Mercury, or for beauty, or power, or a long life? Or do you wish for the most beautiful woman, or any other of the many fine things we have in our treasure trove? Choose but only one thing. For a moment I was at a loss. Then I addressed the gods in this wise. Most honorable contemporaries, I choose one thing, that I may always have the laugh on my side. Not one god made answer, but all began to laugh. From this I concluded that my wish had been granted, and thought that the gods knew how to express themselves with good taste, for it would surely have been inappropriate to answer gravely, Your wish has been granted. Mm -hmm. And so those are those kinds of things. Um, you know, Kierkegaard in this, in his either or, he's got all kinds of these things if you decide to read more of it um, at some point. At any rate, so then um, I'm also asking you to take a look at his upbuilding discourses. And, you know, there's a link here so you can just get to those upbuilding discourses. Um, you have to have your, it's in here in the essential Kierkegaard. So you have to have your ID to get to it, but you know, that's the way to do it. So you just would click on that. And then it, you need your library code, which maybe your library, your uh, computer has, um, holds on to. And then here we are, here's the table of contents. Uh, front matter introduction. It also gives you the page number, so that will help you figure out what pages you want. Um, I want you to be reading. So I'm asking you to read some of the material from either or, um, and then either or one, and then either or two. Uh, I have different page numbers. I've asked you to read specific page numbers. If you want to read more, feel free to do that. Um, and then the four upbuilding discourses, um, which I've highlighted here for you to read. Um, I want you to get a sense that Kierkegaard is, uh, and he also talks up building here, which is really nice. Kierkegaard is asking us, no, Kierkegaard's not asking us to do anything. Kierkegaard is demonstrating, or I'm demonstrating, I should say, by including both of these in our first um, official reading class period where we're reading both his either or, which has things like what you just heard, the man reading, they're kind of light. And then either or B is about, is, is an example of the ethics, uh, ethical way of life. And he has a, a judge, character, author, um, writing in that vein. And then at the same time that he has published those that large book, actually it's a very large book, like 600 pages originally, that's why you're only reading a little bit of it. On the same day, he's also published these upbuilding discourses. Now the first one that he published, either or, is has a pseudonym, has a couple pseudonyms, right? He hasn't, he hasn't signed his own name to it. But these upbuilding discourses, he has published under his own name, SK. So um, that's one of the, oops, where'd we go? Maybe, I'm not sure. I'm gonna go back here. Ha. And then there's a couple, so I just wanted you to get a sense of that, that, that that's what he's doing. And then we have a post, so you just go to that post and then you can write about that. Kierkegaard is groovy. 
Groovy. And A rocks. A is the name of one of the um, pseudonyms. And then we can go back to, you know, once you're done with that, you can go back to uh, lessons. And so each of the lessons, you just pick on those as you go through. So um, the other thing is you've got uh, files here. So any file that you can't find in the lessons should be listed here. Uh, there's the assignments, there's the syllabus again. Why it has it twice? There's different handouts. There's some secondary reading. Uh, there's scanned readings are underneath that, I guess. And there's handouts. I guess that should go under there. I'll figure that out. Okay. Then there's the, your assignments. Here's all of your assignments. And uh, when they're due, um, so if you have a conf if you're confused about that, uh, we have no tests, no tests. Um, and then you, you can also click on the calendar. I'm not quite sure what that means. Okay, the roster, roster is other people that are in the class and you can um, click on them and I will, will do all that. Okay, so that's basically, we're gonna be using Populi and this, this lessons uh, for the majority of our engagement in the class. So now I'm going to in this lecture and then I'll begin another lecture on um, some of the assignments. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to give you a sense of the, the posting just to make sure you understand the posting more clearly and then I'll do the other assignments separately. So discussions. Um, as I just said, I'd like you to have them done by 10 a.m. and some of them are generic but others have particular they're guided, they have guided prompts, okay? So here's a guided prompt, right? I'm asking you, this is the guided prompt for sickness unto death in which he's talking about despair. And he talks about a variety of different forms of despair. And I'm asking you to write a brief account of the sort of despair that best characterizes yourself. Or if you don't want to use yourself, you can make up a name uh, or a character. Uh, but I think it works best if you choose yourself explain why you diagnosed yourself in this way. Now, this might seem personal, so you might not want to post that um, publicly. So you're welcome to send that to me um, and I will ask for volunteers, but nobody has to speak if they don't, if they don't want to. But hopefully we'll have enough um, trust and understanding of the confidential nature of our work together, particularly uh, since many of you are in the MTS program and we'll be continuing to work together and talk some more about your ideas and about things that probably will become near and dear to your heart as your thesis will be at least for a while before you start hating it and just want it done, perhaps. So um, I just wanted to give you a sense of that. There are uh, as I said in the syllabus, and I'm going to do the syllabus this way because I'm not, I don't really like that, that version of it there. But um, as I said in the syllabus, there are, here, let's do this. As I said in the syllabus, there are uh, 10 posts I'm asking you to do out of our 13, 14 classes. And, oh, here, the post assignment is in the appendix. Um, there are only, I think, a couple days where I'm asking you not to have a post. You don't have a post the first day. Uh, and then there's a couple other times when we don't have a post. So here's the post. And notice the appendix is a helpful thing to, to be aware of as, we're, as you're going through the assignments uh, and the course. So here's the weekly post for 10 of our class meetings. I invite you to reflect on this, which I've already uh, talked about. And they'll, they won't be given a grade but you'll get two points for every adequate post. So if you have an inadequate post, you might get one point if you do something. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not asking you to do any, it, it, I'm not asking you to have all the answers. In fact, it's probably best to use these posts as here's something I don't understand. Here's how I understand it. What do, do I have that correct? Um, Here's some, you know, you might even just have something that this came to mind while I was reading Kierkegaard, even though it seems like it's not related. How could it be related? 
Um, so that's 20% of your grade. Now think about that. That basically, if you just read the work and write a post, you got 20% of your grade A's, solid A's. So that's right, Tangela. She liked that too. All right. Well, now I'm going to stop, and we'll I'll continue this um, with the other assignments because I think that would be helpful. For our first class, I ask you this though before you go. Um, as we come in, I'd like you to share something about yourself. And you can think if you want to share anything in particular about yourself. Uh, but also, if there's some reason why you're attracted to Kierkegaard, uh, yeah, that's probably it. I mean, I think most of you know each other. Um, and I encourage you to take a look at this first class and look to read the syllabus and kind of get a sense of what we're doing and to listen to the lectures and, you know, play around with the populi thing and see some of the different uh, extras that I've added as well as the, the expectations for you. All right. And where are you? I don't know how to get to you now. And that's not it. Oh, no, that's not it. Where, where is it? Oh, I need to stop doing that. Sorry, I'm having a hard time figuring this out. Okay. Stop sharing.